Hello everyone and welcome to another World of Warships video. This one we're just going to have some gameplay of the Omaha because I was playing a lot of this ship because I really wanted to get to my Cleveland so I've got quite a few wee games here. We'll do the normal three but there's no sort of light review at the beginning talking about the ship because we've already done that in the last Omaha video. But I suppose I'll probably end up talking about it and during the video on what it's like anyway so you could argue the light review will still be there. <sighs> Wee bit out of breath there. This is our first game for today. And it looks like a tier 6 game for me. It's pretty hard to tell. Yeah, it's definitely a tier 6 game on my little screen. Now, skipping ahead to when the action begins. Game starts off pretty normal. We come on down the flank. Get some opening shots on. That looks like an enemy Omaha. Or I, I, don't, I don't see a turret, so it might be a phoenix. It's the main difference between the two, and it's the easiest way to distinguish them. So it's probably a phoenix here below us. But still, we're opening fire, we're getting some damage. Fire and heat, because I just love setting people on fire. Fire and AP would probably be better choice against another phoenix or Omaha. I like fire damage, so we're spewing fire, HE. Land some more hits. We are taking some incoming fire here, but nothing too serious, nothing to write home about or to worry about. As of yet, we are still sending lots of shells over and getting a good few hits. Missed completely there, that was unlucky. But we're normally hitting about 3-4 times with each salvo. Two times there. I'm trying to get some arc and fire onto that ship just to come in around there. But he's moving a lot slower than I thought he was going to be. So I overestimate how much lead I need to give those shots and they miss them by a country mile. Just taking a moment to look around the battlefield, looking over there, allied just getting just dodging those torpedoes. Then we come on and we start firing at that guy again. I don't know what that salvo was aimed at. It definitely wasn't the enemy anyway. We need to give them a wee bit more lead than those ones. It's about here I go right. I can do a lot more damage by setting that battleship on fire and spewing lots of shells at him. So I start aiming at the battleship instead of the cruiser, because the cruiser's about to die and I really just, I'm trying to make it sound good but I'm up. I should have finished the cruiser off before going to the battleship, so yeah. Yeah I think that was the first load of shots there, I was still looking at the battleship for the recording but we're actually going at the battleship. If. I think I said battleship twice there, I meant cruiser the first time. Sorry about that. Okay, now we've set him on fire again, which is great. Really want to... I just love setting ships on fire in this game. The damage over time builds up really fast. Now if you set them on fire the first time, you'll normally get the repair out of them, which can take a lot of utility away from that repair. And in a cruiser, your shells, you can fire shells that fast that you can get more, sh set them on fire again relatively soon. Then once you've set them on fire in one area of the ship, slightly alter your aim, try and set them up on fire in a different area of the ship. Look, see, we've set them on fire again and he doesn't have his repair to repair it this time. So that means that fire is probably going to do its full damage over time. A bit like an MMO, the dot spells. They can be really nasty and it mounts up, especially if you get his full ship on fire. Depending on the ship, that's three or four sections, and that's four lots of it ticking away. They just they die in seconds because then you've got the damage from the fires, which will be doing more than your shells, and the damage from your shells incoming, still doing damage. Unless you use an AP, then it'll probably be more than the fire. Coming up here now, I'm pretty sure this is a Cleveland. It was on nearly full health, and so 
This guy really had no excuse for me getting the better of him. I set him on fire. He repairs it. I set him on fire again. There's a trend going with me and a cruiser. You can see something that is called a trend appearing. I like to set things on fire. I'm not a pyromaniac, honest. But I just like to watch it burn. But yep. Fire damage is a really good way to take a health down. Just tick, 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 tick. And it's... You're still raining shells on them. It's like a new source of damage. It's an increase to your damage on top of your shell damage. And a lot of people overlook it because they just look at the HE damage and they don't... And they look at AP damage and go, I'd rather have AP because it's more damage. But you're forgetting to add on the damage from setting people on fire, which can be quite high. Now, speeding up, zoom in, zoom, 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 because there's nothing really going on here. I'm just maneuvering. And I slowed down a bit here because there was a torpedo run on me, but really I didn't have any hope of hitting me. I'll get a couple of plane shoots down, a tiny bit of free of experience, nothing really to write home about. Still, nice, extra, makes me look a bit better. More stuff up the top, more wee badges at the top. Come on over here now, we're going to fire some more shells at this guy. It's another battleship, so as usual I'm going to be trying to set him on fire. Now I'm not trying to say Citadel penetrations are not worth it, because the counter argument to the argument I had earlier is Citadel penetrations is like extra damage on top of the AP damage. Well, technically it's included in the maximum damage because that is your citadel penetration. The only time you get your maximum damage on your shells is a citadel penetration. And so that maximum HE damage is due to citadel penetration. I only really see that on carriers, HE, citadel penetrations. And uh, the maximum AP damage is also citadel penetrations. But they are beautifully large hits and they do drown up the damage way faster than anything citadel penetrations but you need to be in a battleship or you need to know your ship and the enemy ship to be able to guarantee that you're going to get citadel penetrations even in a battleship you need to know your ship and their ship a bit to guarantee it because there is times where you're just going to over penetrate especially in battleships and when you're facing off against lighter cruisers and destroyers, you need to use the heat in battleships. Right, we're getting some back to the game. Now I've been distracted a wee bit of enough. Firing some shells over this mountain, getting them onto the carrier. But I can't afford to still be shooting at that carrier after that last salvo there because I've got two more Clevelands. I mean, this is just not fair, this game. I fought one Cleveland, now I'm home to fight another Cleveland, and he's got a friend Cleveland. How's that fair? I'm in Omaha. They are tier 6 ships. Cleveland is one hell of a beautiful ship. They're fighting three of them. Like, my ship's worse than one. And then somebody got a citadel penetration on me and that is it. See, that is a citadel penetration. I was sitting there quite merrily with a good amount of health left. And then that's me gone. Now this game was looking really good for my team earlier, but now look at it. We're down to four team members. And none of them are looking that healthy or good. We're now hoping we can turn this around because we were winning earlier. And but now we've got the doo doo butter on our side. We're the ones fighting the uphill battle. Jump over to this battleship, the Fusel. Nice, nice battleship. I love the number of guns it's got, but any ship that's got that number of turrets is generally quite beautiful and oh but that's not good for him at all four torpedoes from a ship if he was a battleship anything other than a battleship he'd be gone that's most of his health that was nasty that was literally nasty it was like our last hope was his health and it's gone speeding things up as battleship gameplay is a snail's pace he did manage to take out that destroyer though that took off most of his health, so at least he got his revenge. Here come the torpedo bombers, battleship's worst nightmare. And look at that, nice, lovely, managed to survive against those. Oh, and another torpedo run. 
beautiful. Saved by his fighters. Well, the fighters. And his manoeuvring, but that was beautiful. Battleship dodged two lots of torpedoes. That's quite good. But now he's literally got no health left at all thanks to the fire, and he's facing off against some battleships. One good salvo, not even a citadel penetration, and he is gone. But we ran out of time, and we weren't really going to win anyway. They won on points. We got a good amount of experience and money for a loss, came top of our team, which is pretty normal, 80% of my games have come top of my team, and apart from that everything was pretty mediocre. So yeah, it was good for a loss I suppose, good for a tier 4 loss, or tier 5, yeah tier 5, we're in the Omaha not the Phoenix. Now on to the second game. And this is a tier 5 game, so we are top tier, but that doesn't make a huge difference in World of Warships. And as always, we will jump ahead to when the action starts. I started the recording a few seconds too late there, and you just missed one wee salvo that got quite a few number of hits and set them on fire and blah de blah de blah. Did some nice things, but not that nice. And he generally looks like he did pretty much the same to me. Come round here to my chosen battlefield, and here we go, a couple of ships for me to fight. Now that looks like a rival Omaha, the exact same type of ship as me, because I think I see a turret. Think, yeah, because I think that was the turret that just fired those two shells incoming. I brought it up for a second there, but it was disappeared too fast for me to see. Now he is taking quite a bit of damage from me and my allies, that we destroyer there, and I think I've got a battleship behind me, if memory serves. Spin things up a wee bit. We can get some more shells on him. I've lost about a quarter of my health, so I'm feeling quite good at this point in time. I know I've got plenty of health, I have nothing to worry about at this point. Landing more shots, set him on fire, set him on fire again. So now he is burning without his repair. And, oh, he's on fire in a couple of places. This guy's as good as dead. But now I'm on fire too. I'm nearing the edge of the map, so I'll start turning around and go back the other way. Great thing about this ship is you just turned. Need to wait for your guns to turn? Nope, I have guns on the other side. The turrets still have to turn, but... Doesn't matter, I've got guns here. Right, now onto the battleship. We've already set him on fire, which is beautiful. Twice in two different sections, half of his ship is on fire. So I should be aiming a bit further back trying to set his rear on fire and oh my word. That was one hell of a nasty hit. Setting him on fire the third time doesn't even make it up for it. Especially how he repairs it all straight away. But oh my word. Now for... We're all... We're a one hit KO for him. If he hits us once really we are dead. In fact for most of the ships on the enemy team I'm a one hit KO. One broadside KO, we'll put label it. And at this point I wasn't feeling good about this game at all. There's that guy in the middle there I just showed you, which I'm trying to avoid because he could shoot over and destroy me. This guy here, he's not got his turrets aimed at me so I'm like, yes, I'm going to be able to get some more shots off. But for being this little HP near this early on in the game, I was feeling really bad about this game at this moment. But I didn't let that deteriorate my resolve. I noticed the guy in the middle had been killed so I didn't mind coming over now. And so I start coming over and I need to ooh, see how close those shots were. Those shots would have killed me. Well, they would have killed me or nearly killed me. I'd have been literally a secondary battery gun, one hit kill at that point if I survived. And now I'm expecting him to expect me to just drive right through those narrows. So I expect him to be coming in and just using the secondary batteries or a curb stomp to finish me off. So I'm planting those torpedoes off with him expecting him to expect me to come from here. Like that. And as I come round here, I notice he's not actually driving that, he's running away from us. So those torpedoes were useless. But I was right about where he expected me to turn up because if we look in there, Turrets facing completely the wrong way. Completely the wrong way. 
and so I know I'm nice and safe for now, but if he turns those turrets, I am as good as a goner, unless I get a bit of luck. So I'm trying to just catch up to him a wee bit, but not get into his secondary battery range, so I can drive around his ship and try and stay out of his turrets range, or turn range, but he's turning the whole ship towards me, so I'm like, oh my god, I am a goner. Since he's now broadside to me, I would need to be in secondary turret range to stop him from turning the turrets to hit me. And <gasps> that was a close call. He got landed one shell on me there out of the four, but I got really lucky and it damaged nothing. So I took next to no damage. So once again, I'm feeling rather lucky. So lucky to be alive at this point after that initial large roll he got on me. So I'm just pumping a shell after shell into him because I just want to do as much damage to him as possible now because I'm expecting him to kill me so that my team can easily finish him off. I've turned around and I've started to head back south because I know there's no hope for me to stay out of his turret range and <gasps> oh my whoa did you see that? I cannot believe my luck right now. He hit me with another two of those huge battleship guns and I'm still in the water. Earlier on he hit me with two and took off half of my health. This, I'm just so lucky. But now I need to get worried about a secondary battery range. I'm getting quite close but oh there we go he's gone and we got the arsonist for the amount of fire damage we did to him. So we did a lot of damage to him. Now I'm coming over and I'm going to support my team but I'm going to stay at my maximum range because I don't want the enemy ships to know how little health I've got. There we go, I'm firing over because a lot of people don't check what enemy health is enemy ships are on so they won't realise I'm on low health until I get, I think it's about 8 kilometers out where it starts telling you the health or something like that. I've never paid attention, I just know you need to be a lot closer. Like for example, it's not showing me the destroyer's health there. So I'm trying to stay at maximum range possible and just support my team because literally I'm in 3 digit health. That is like having 1 HP in World of Tanks. Man, the destroyer could sneeze in my direction and I'd be gone. I'm a 1 hit KO for an anti-air battery, it's machine gun, never mind the anything else in this game. In fact, I'm on such little health right now, a destroyer could use a smoke generator to kill me. That's how low my health is. So I'm staying as far away as I possibly can and supporting my team by doing as much damage as I possibly can. Because, really, if I get anywhere near an enemy right now, he'd have to be an idiot not to target me and take me out. Because I still have quite a large damage potential to deliver. Because my guns on my right side are all fully functional. I've lost one completely on the other side. That is quite a nice fa function of this game. I like it how when ships get really badly damaged they can lose parts of it completely. Like the turrets are out and they're not going to be coming back when you repair them. I just wish it had happened a bit more often. Because like when a battleship repair, you use your repair and it loses its heel, it's like it wasn't in a battle. But I see some of its guns were knocked out for good. That's what I'd like to see more of that. Give it more of a prolonged battle feel. You're literally on your last legs, you're walking around the corner with one turret, then you headshot the destroyer that was about to torpedo run you with your main last remaining main gun. That's just like the stuff of epicness. I can like it'd make the game so much more cinematic to me. But maybe a lot of people don't like that, so I don't know. We got another kill, getting quite a good amount of fire damage and hitting with my HE. So we are supporting my team really well and if I died earlier, just imagine how much, well, how little damage I would have done in comparison to now. I've done a lot of damage since that initial battleship engagement and I've set this guy on fire too. Now here, I'm getting a bit too confident now. I realise I'm on really low health, but I'm like, <laughs> I'm invincible at this point in the time, they're not even looking at me. So I decide I'm going to drive in closer so I get more accurate with my guns, 
which is really stupid. I'm really worried about planes because a dive bomber would be perfect for killing me. And there's Confederate! That just shows you how much damage we have done for my team this game. Especially how most... Well... I died. Stupid, stupid me. But that just shows you how well I did to support my team, considering I did... Next, the first two ships I fought, I did severe damage to. Well, not the first one, the second and the third one I did. It was that one right at the beginning. And then after that, three more ships I've supported my team and did at least 20%, I think it is. 20 or 30% of their health and damage. A few more kills, a lot more fire damage. So see, if I had died earlier, my team would have it'd been a much closer call. Because those other ships would have had about three times longer to deal damage, and all my team are pretty low in health, apart from that one battleship just to the right. So it would have been a close cut thing. I think we would have still won if I had died earlier, but it would have been a close call. Then again, I like to toot my own horn. Who doesn't? Especially when you get victories like that. Confederate victory is always a good victory. Great experience and money. Top of the team, what do you expect? By a long shot, I might add. So it's fair enough to say I carried that game, apart from the top, say maybe three or four members of my team, they helped. <laughs> yeah, big head time. Let's go people. We got, yeah. Credits and XP, good amount. Now on to our third game. I think this is another tier 5 game. It looks like it is to me, I don't see another tier 6 there. So yeah, it looks like a tier 5 game to me. So we're top tier again, so that's great. But it's not as important in World of Warships to be top tier. Especially when you're in a good ship. If you're in a good ship, you're laughing if you're the what tier you're in because you can do lots of damage and get lots of experience from dealing damage to higher tier ships. So, like the St. Louis. You're laughing no matter what you're in. Because everybody's scared of your broadsides. Now, usual me style, I went charging right up the flank. Was the first team member to spot the enemy on that flank. Then I turned around and run back to my allies after getting some light damage onto the enemy with minimum damage to me. I like to open up that way because I get a nice wee bit. And see, I get about 15 shells, a couple of sets on fires. Normally just make them use their repairs. And then... It's sort of like a skirmish before the main battle begins. I can't... I can't survive out there on my own, so I definitely need to pull back. Because I don't want to take on like three ships on my own. I need to pull back and get my help from my allies. But I normally do way more damage to the enemy than they do to me. It's pretty rare that I go charging up the flank and then have to pull back to my allies. That I get citadel penned by a battleship or something. And I'm pretty much out of the game from the beginning. That has ex happened once or twice, but extremely rare. Now that my allies are here, I'm starting to turn back around. There we go. Good me. And we're going to go up and support them. But there's a destroyer. And I've not said it in a while, so I hope you guys remember. What do you do when you're in a cruiser and you see a destroyer? Fire all the guns! Slightly different than before, but still, I hope you still remember. Because if I'm ever playing a battleship and you're there, and you're in a cruiser, and you leave the goddamn destroyer to me, I'm not going to be happy. All those torpedoes have gotten in my way of my plan a wee bit because I was planning to come round and closely follow this island, but I'm going to need to slow down so I don't drive far too far up ahead and actually come into range of those torpedoes. Because it would be an absolute idiot of me if I did manage to get hit by them. So as you see, I've slowed down. Even though I don't think they had much hope, but just in case, because I was concentrating on fire and I didn't want to have to concentrate on not having to hit the torpedoes. And they must be the ones I was talking about. That would make more sense. But I see I've got plenty of time. So I can just come nip around this corner. I'm speeding back up now. That was quite a nasty hit from that battleship there. Took off about a quarter of my health. With, I think it was about two shells landed and hit me. Another one hit me just there, just took a wee chip off. That's still quite a nasty amount of damage compared to other types of ship. 
Now at this point in time, I'm thinking that it's my job to hunt that destroyer just on the other side of this island there. And when I seen he was heading in this direction, I thought, right, I'm going to do a destroyer trick on him. But he doesn't. He sees it last second and turns around. And so, he's not as daft as a lot of captains are out there and drive straight around the corner of the island. Torpedo bombers are going after me. I'm not really that bothered about them. I'm a wee bit more worried about those ones, though, that have dropped those torpedoes. But still, I'm in a cruiser. I'm agile enough to nimbly turn into them, well away from them would be more correct and they've got no hope of hitting me now and they're gone. That destroyer has now came out into the open so sorry destroyer captain you drove in front of a cruiser with next to no health what do you think's gonna happen? Though you were pretty good at dodging here for a wee bit yep you threw my aim off there Threw my aim off there. I got you there. Got you a wee bit more there. Really low health now. Now come in the big salvos that I've clocked in on them. Gone. Enemy destroyer blown up. Back to the battleship. Now that my job has done guarding my team from destroyers. Always your first goal. Back to the spewing shells at battleships, trying to set them on fire. Oh, speaking of fire, there we go, we've put them on fire and we've, we've sunk them. So it's another kill up for me. Now I decide I'm going to turn and go straight down this island and deal some damage on these big battleships here. And there's a cruiser just over in the horizon, setting him on fire would be great for my team. What is me if calling aircraft carriers cruisers? I know some of them were refitted cruisers, like the earlier ones, but come on me, get your job right. It's not a cruiser, it's an aircraft carrier, how can you get the two muddled up? Well, I'm not really getting the two muddled up, it's just my mouth saying the wrong one for some reason. There we go, we set the battleship on fire again. Well, technically the first time for this battleship, and he repairs it as you expect, so that's his repair used. So now we can hopefully set him on fire again, and then we'll spread it to other areas of his ship. And that'll be him as good as dead. We wouldn't even need to aim at him anymore. So, but he is going behind this mountain or island, bit of both really. So we're right, there. We go. We set him on fire. Now hopefully we can spread it to a different area in his ship. His repair's gone, so he's there. We go in fire in two areas. He's as good as dead. He's got no repair to fix it, and he's gonna die before it's time. He gets it back, so now I'm going to concentrate on these aircraft carriers. I got it right. We celebrate people, I got it right. It's fire and hate shit them, really wanting to set them on fire, expecting them to repair it straight away so he can get his airs, airs, aeroplanes into the air. Set them, he must have repaired it because I set them on fire in the exact same location. So that must really suck. It didn't even have time for the animation of the fire to end before. Oh! He sunk. And remember that guy we set on fire? Look how little his health is now. And that's all because of my fire and look at that. Confederate again. Two games in a row. Oh, and that guy, the battleship. I sunk him. I haven't even shot him in the past five minutes, but he's now dead thanks to my fire damage. And that is another victory. Two Confederate games in a row. Just beautiful. Top of our team again. Not as good a game as last time. But we had a lot more health left than last time. Good amount of money, good amount of experience. What more can you ask for? So I hope everyone's enjoyed this revisiting of the Omaha. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye and good luck.